My name is Dr. Stephanie Kappel and I'm a cosmetic dermatology in Newport Beach, Orange County, California. And today I wanted to talk about temples and temporal filler because this is a topic that I've seen come up a lot on social media and I actually saw another practice post this treatment and procedure and they were actually doing it incorrectly and looking at the comments on that post from other injectors just made me aware that there may be a little bit more increased awareness that's needed for the safety effect profile of this procedure, the correct way in which it should be done and the complications that exist um, when having this procedure done. So what exactly is temporal filler or temporal hollowing? So temporal hollowing, these are the temples of the, the face and the head. And sometimes as we get older, you get little depressions in this area. And it can happen with age as the skin and the subcutaneous tissue and fat kind of shrink and thin out over time, making us look hollow here. And this can make us look older or aged or sickly or unhealthy. It can also happen in younger patients who have a dramatic weight loss. So people who are you know, competitive fitness models oftentimes will start to look older in their face. Their bodies look amazing, but they can look aged and kind of gaunt in the face because this is the area and in your mid face where you can lose a lot of volume. Just like you lose fat on other areas of your body, you can lose it in these areas and it can make you look Look like un, you know unhealthy or like sick or or gaunt or older so even if you're young you can look older in the face for the temples if you have that temporal hollowing or what we call temporal wasting so filling in the temples usually is a little bit of filler that's injected in this area and it's not usually something that patients come in asking for unless they're following other dermatologists or plastic surgeons on social media or some other provider makes them aware of it because usually it's not something that somebody will come in to say you know that they want treated people come in all the time asking for under eye hollows or lip augmentation or higher cheekbones or a more pronounced chin definition or jawline definition those are the things that patients usually come in asking for but it takes an astute clinician um, to see if a patient would benefit from temporal hollowing or a temporal filler. So in aesthetics fellowship, you learn these kinds of things that kind of give you an eye and a vantage point that may be different than you know someone else who maybe not have this you know appropriate training. And when the eyes scan the face, the brain perceives certain aspects as young, old, or healthy or sick. And usually when you have a little bit of temporal wasting here, you won't be able to put your hands on it, but if someone you know automatically, you know, dramatically had this loss of volume right here, you'd be like, why does that person look older? Are you sick? Are you feeling okay? It's that kind of thing. And it's those little nuances and aesthetics fellowship that we learn that make people have beautiful results. You know, patients look 10 to 15 years younger than they really are, but they look like nothing has been done. And it's paying attention to the things you don't see that really make an aesthetic outcome look beautiful and natural and amazing. So filling in the temples, filling in little hollows, even if it's not bringing a patient in for that procedure, will definitely usually help um, just with the overall global youthful, youthful rejuvenation that um, patients come in for and the look that everybody wants. Now the cool thing about temporal filler, it's one of those treatments that you'll just look better. You'll look refreshed, you'll look revitalized, you'll look younger, you'll have a more youthful look to you, but none of your friends or family members or even your significant other is gonna be able to say, you had temporal filler, didn't you? Like nobody's gonna ever know that. Your eyes will just be a little bit raised and lifted and you'll just have like a globalization improvement and one more youthful look, but it's one of those things where nobody's gonna know that you had anything done, which is like the perfect aesthetic balance because you wanna look great and you wanna look rejuvenated, you wanna look like the best version of yourself, but you never want to look different. You never want to look like you had something done and you never want to dramatically change, um, you know, your aesthetic appearance. So the injection technique for temporal filler is really important. It's an advanced injection and should be done by someone who is well-trained and well-versed in this type of injection technique. So, you know, I don't mean to be the derm police out there, but you have to remember during fellowship, if you go to an ACGME accredited fellowship, after you complete your dermatology residency or whatever residency, you know, your provider or your physician has, has completed, you have to log in at least a thousand cases being performed on cadavers and model patients with and attending behind, you know, breathing down your neck, making sure every move you make is accountable and guiding you and instructing you. So when you compare an injector who've had, who's had that kind of training to someone who just is working in a med spa and just quickly YouTubes how to perform this procedure before doing it on an actual paid patient who's 
you know, trusting you with their health and their outcomes, it's, you know, it's really disheartening to see that there's some, you know, some offices that may not be accountable and have the correct and proper training, not only to perform the procedure, but to reverse it, God forbid something goes wrong. So, you know, I just think it's really important to increase awareness and, um, not only teach injectors the right way to do things, but also to teach patients, you know, this is the right way how things should be done and not to worry about challenging or questioning your provider with respect to his or her credentials or their experience um, injecting, you know, a certain area that may be a little bit higher risk. So don't be afraid to ask. And if anything, at the end of the day and at the end of my career, I want to feel like I did good by improving patients' experiences procedures that are done safely and effectively with minimal complications. And this area is one of them because God forbid your injector goes in the wrong area, isn't in the right tissue plane, or uses the wrong type of needle, blindness, stroke, and horrible complications can happen. So I don't want to deter people from having this procedure done because it's an amazing treatment. Temporal filler is a beautiful aesthetic outcome when done correctly, but I also want to minimize the complication risk. And I think knowledge is power. I want to share information with other injectors who may be subscribed or following me and who may be just starting out in their careers. And I think that, you know, a rising tide raises all ships. It will make a better experience for everyone doing this procedure, patients or providers, um, by minimizing complications. So without going into it further, it's important to use a longer needle and you have to inject in an avascular plane, which is right over the periosteum, right over the bone. Now, aspiration is important, but the aspiration should be like a third checkpoint and should never draw blood if you're in the correct plane. The reason why we recommend aspirating when injecting is to make sure that the patient doesn't have a barren anatomy and, you know, always have it like as a you know, a safety net to make sure that you're not in a vessel, but for injectors who are newer and may not be injecting in the right dermal plane, you know, aspiration when blood comes into the needle, that means that you're either not in the right plane or you're not deep enough and you're not doing it correctly. Even when those um, checkpoints are made and a patient or an injector is injecting at the correct depth with the correct needle in the correct location, you know, the patient may have a barren anatomy. You know, the vessels may be in a periosteal avascular area, which in most patients, they're not existent, but that's where the aspiration comes into. So sorry if that got too technical, but that's more for our newer injectors who follow me, who want to kind of you know, learn more about this procedure and have, you know, um, a lower complication rate and a higher safety effect profile. So although you can use Sculptra and other products in the temples, I do love Voluma. Voluma is a hyaluronic acid based um, injectable with a high G prime, meaning it's a thicker formulation and molecular configuration and it's engineered to be injected directly over the bone. So the periosteal, periosteal just means over the bone and underneath the skin of the temple, you have your skin and you have blood vessels, you have fat pads, you have all, you know, innervation and other structures. And then right over the bone, there's this magical area called the avascular plane where there's no blood vessels and that's where you want to be down with your needle. And then you want to aspirate to make sure you're not in a vessel. And when you inject there, usually you do, I do half a syringe on either side side and it expands once it's in the tissue. So usually patients will see an immediate improvement, but that continues to get better over the course of a week or so. And results last about two years. And also conserve, being conservative and less is more are two important ways that I practice. And I recommend for newer injectors to take on this, um, you know, adopt this into their practice as well. You can always add more, reversing it, dissolving it later. You know, that's something that you don't really want to get into. And I think it's better to be conservative and take successive approximations to your goal than just doing too much, too fast, causing too much swelling. And it's too traumatic for the patient. And, you know, getting these procedures done myself too, as a patient, I would rather my injector and my provider perform you know, uh, treatments on me in this manner as well. So whenever doing temporal filler, I usually just do one syringe and I do half on each side. And then I let the patient kind of have it, you know, settle into place. And after a month or two of here, she wants a little bit more Then I safely add another half and half. I'll never do like one to two syringes per side, which I see other people doing too. And that increases your complication rate. It's not as fun of an experience for patients. And I just feel like the aesthetic outcomes are usually better when it's a less, you know, less is more, kind of, um, you know, experience. And I think that that treatment algorithm um, works out well for me, works out well for my patients, and God forbid, I've never had a complication and I intend to keep it that way.